Hey everyone, let's start the webinar. So once again, welcome to our webinar. This is another week and Ali Fantastic is back again within a short period of time. So today they are gonna talk on MariaDB alerting and multi-tenancy support by KubeDB. And during the webinar, if you have any question, please feel free to ask in the Zoom chat and we'll be answering all of the questions after the demo is done and when the Q&A session starts. So Alif, please feel free to start. Hello everyone, I am Alif from AppScourt. So let's start today's webinar. So in the webinar, it will be, there will be two parts. Uh, in the first part, I will be discussing MariaDB alerting. And in the second part, Tazdil will discuss about schema manager. So if we look at the table of contents in the MariaDB alerting at first, I will show you some database server alerts. After that, I will show Galera clustering alerts and clustering alerts. And after that, KubeDB custom resource alerts and stash alerts. So let's start MariaDB alerting. <clears throat> so at first, I will show you my work environment. I have installed a KubeDB provisioner, KubeDB ops manager, a Kube Prometheus stack for uh, scraping matrix matrices and also stashed stash and panopticon. So uh, I am going to show you my workstation. So here uh, I am watching all the ports uh, that are currently installed, uh, currently deployed in the kind cluster. And also we are watching the MariaDB objects uh, that is provided by KubeDB and also watching MariaDB ops request and backup configuration by stash and backup sessions. And in the bottom we are watching a restore session. So we have a cluster, my, a cluster of MariaDB running here of three nodes. And we also created a user uh, named Alif uh, in the database. And we are we have deployed a backup configuration to take backup of the uh, MariaDB database. And we also created a database and table in the uh, MariaDB. So let's start with the alerting stuffs. So at first I will show you the uh, DB alerts. So uh, here is the values.yaml file. Uh, if you want to deploy alert in your uh, DB provision MariaDB, uh, you have the, these options to alert, uh, create alerts. Uh, these are, you, you can create alert in the MySQL instance, based on MySQL instance, MySQL service, and MySQL too many connections. Uh, so MySQL instance down does, if one of your node uh, goes down, then it will create an alert. So uh, we are enabling this field true. And duration means uh, if the alert is firing for uh, duration time, then it will fire the alert. And the severity here is critical. So for the database section, I will demonstrate three of these alerts. So let's make this field true and deploy this chart. So if I go to the Prometheus alert section, uh, I am, uh, I have put forwarded the Prometheus uh, deployment here in 9090 port. So here is the Prometheus UI and this is the alert section. So we have created three alerts uh, that's our uh, database related alerts. So it will show in the alert section soon. So let's wait a moment until the alert section shows. And uh, in between, uh, let's know what are the alerts. Uh, if uh, the, in the first alerts, it shows the uh, instance failed. That means uh, if one of the MariaDB on one or more MariaDB ports get deleted or somehow the server is down, it will fire alerts in this section. And the second alert is related to 
service down that means if all the ports downs uh, then there will be no service to serve the data, uh, the front end so uh, in that, that case uh, the MariaDB service down alert will be fired and mysql too many connections will be fired when there are too many connections into the database here in the value field you can provide the percentage of connections to consider as threshold uh, for example if you put the value 80 percent then the if the database cross the 80 percent connections then it will fire the alert uh, okay so i forgot to save the file so so here you can see uh, we have three new alerts here uh, that are registered in the alert section so uh, these are the first uh, three alerts so to fire the first alert i'm going to delete one of the my adb ports so that it will uh, take a alert of uh, mysql instance down so let's delete a port you can also shut down the uh, mysql server from one of this port to demonstrate the alert so the first node is in terminating state So the alert is generated based on uh, this expression uh, in Prometheus matrix. If the MySQL app is zero for the database, then it will fire the alert. So uh, our pod is in currently terminating state and also it has become running, but the server is not started yet. So it will fire an alert very soon. We have to wait uh, for a moment. Okay, uh, we can see that if alert is firing here. So these are the labels of the matrix where the based on these labels uh, and the value from this expression, the alert is firing. And if we want to demonstrate the MySQL service down, we can just delete all the ports. That means the service will be down. So on that we can generate the uh, MySQL service down alert. So I'm going to delete all the ports of this MySQL MariaDB deployment. So all the ports are in terminating state. Uh, in the meanwhile, you can see the MySQL too many, many connections alert has already fired. Uh, the reason is I have given the value of 4%, uh, the total MySQL connection in one node is 151. So I have given the 4% value. That means uh, if uh, the value, if the number of connection is more than five or six, then uh, more than four or five, it will fire the alert. So in our two nodes, uh, that is uh, sample MariaDB one and two has the value that is greater than 4%. So the alert is already firing. Uh, we have we have given the value 4%, a very low value intentionally because uh, just to check the alert firing. So if uh, the expression gets any value, it will fire alert, but when it recovers, uh, just it will, shut, uh, it will stop the alert. So currently the MySQL has not too many connections. That's why the, this is green and zero active. So we will wait some other moment to show if the service is down or not. From here, uh, we can see that the all ports, ports has come online. So, but the server is uh, not up yet. So in this moment, it will create alert. Uh, so here you can see the MySQL service down has created one alert. That means the total service is down and MySQL instance down is created three alerts. That means all three nodes are not uh, online. So this is the uh, alerts from the MySQL server side. We have other alerts, for example, MySQL high threads running, MySQL slow queries, MySQL InnoDB log weights, 
MySQL restarted, MySQL high query per second, MySQL high incoming bytes, outgoing bytes, and other alerts. So you can configure the alert and also fi uh, fix the threshold value based on your need and you can get the DB related alerts. So this is the database alerts. Uh, and in the next part, we are going to demonstrate the cluster related alerts. So actually in the cluster alert, uh, as my MariaDB cluster use Galera clustering under the hood. So we are actually uh, alerting based on the mm, Galera replication latency. So in the Galera replication latency, we has provided the value uh, so small so that uh, we can test the alert in our current condition. And if the alert is keep firing for one minute, then it will, if the alert is online for online, then it will fire the alert. So let's deploy this part of the alert and just make it false so that it does not create alert for the database site. And let's wait for a moment until the gallery cluster alerts shows. And in the meanwhile, I want to show a script uh, in order to uh, generate the replication alert. I have to create a client that uh, makes a lots of query in the database. So I'm going to show you a script where I just created some unlimited queries. Uh, here I am connecting to the database and inserting values into the table and just uh, making a query so that it gets some alerts. So I am going to run the script when the alert is online. It takes some time to update, to, to take update. Okay, uh, the previous alerts are gone and the new alerts, uh, Galera replication latency has shown. So uh, if we check the value here, you can see currently all the nodes has replication latency zero because there is no query, but when I uh, run this script in the alert it will uh, in in the file it will create alerts uh, it will create high replication latency okay uh, one more thing before to that i have to port forward the uh, cluster into my local machine and then run the script so the script is running and if we check the matrices, you can see there is some latencies here because it, uh, the script is creating a lot of requests and queries in the database. So some of the values are greater than uh, from three nodes, uh, these two values are greater than the given threshold that was uh, this. So it will create a alert if the thing is go for one, if the expression is true for one minute. So uh, already you can see we have three alert pending uh, because the, all the values are greater than the given threshold. So in one minute, it will, the alert become, uh, the alert state will become firing. Currently it is now pending. So in this way, you can create alerts on your MyRadB Galera cluster. So let's wait uh, 30 or 40 second modes until the state become firing here. And in the meanwhile, I can show you another thing from the alert manager site. Uh, this is the alert manager site. And from here, you can see the gallery application too long alert is firing and from the 
alert manager side we can see the details here uh, what's happening here uh, so this is the alert and if we show info uh, it says in the summary MariaDB galera cluster is too long uh, greater than this second and the instep is sample MariaDB zero that is our pod name and also we have all the uh, all the labels of the matrix that we use to create the alert so using uh, the alert manager you can get the descriptions and summary and other information and you can also use this information so as the application alert has fired uh, i'm going to shut down the script and go for the next alert so in the next alert section Let's make this false and this thing true. And well, uh, in the next group of alert contains kubedb MariaDB phase not ready. Uh, we use uh, for MariaDB database, we use uh, our custom CRD that is called MariaDB. So when the MariaDB phase is not ready, the, this alert, the, when the MariaDB phase is not ready for state one minutes, it will uh, fire a alert. Uh, that is MariaDB phase not ready. And if the MariaDB phase is critical for one minute, it will create uh, the, this alert. So I'm going to make the duration zero because I don't want to wait one minute for this. And let's check uh, if this alert fires or not. So we have already deployed the uh, we are deploying the alert with updated chains and wait until this okay uh keep my MariaDB phase critical alert has registered so let's make this critical uh it, as it is green that means uh, there is no phase that is critical so let's simulate this alert, uh, you can see from here, the DB is in ready state, but if I delete one of the ports, then the DB will get into critical state. So the one of the port is terminating and when it's out of the sync, it will become critical. Well, uh, the database is in critical status. So the alert should be firing here. We have to wait for a moment. Okay, uh, the KubeDB MariaDB phase critical alert is firing. So if we check the Prometheus query, we can see that we have one node uh, that has the phase critical. And uh, this matrix is supported by Panopticon uh, that is provided by, that is supported by AppScot. So this is the KubeDB group of alert. And after that, uh, we'll demonstrate the ops request alert. So let's make this KubeDB alert group of alert false and ops request true. So here are multiple alerts, uh, just like KubeDB MariaDB ops request progress and KubeDB MariaDB uh, ops request progressing too long and if the MariaDB ops request failed. So uh, let's uh, apply the changes. It happens a lot of time when uh, the ops request sometimes is progressing for too long, like uh, 30 or 40 minutes or the Ops request fails after a long time. So it's uh, better to have alerts when these things are happen, happening. So uh, in the second alert, you can see that QGB obstacle status progressing for too long and here the duration is 30 minutes. That means if the status is uh, progressing for 30 minutes, that will, it will create a critical alert.
Okay, let's update the value again. Okay, uh, we got the ops request alerts. So this all, all this ops request alerts matrix is also supported by the Panopticon. So uh, to generate the ops request alert, I am going to deploy a ops request. So let me show you the ops request YAML file before deploying that. So this is the ops request uh, that is the volume expansion type ops request where uh, we are expecting our each node of uh, PVC size is one gigabytes. But uh, uh, I am the our workstation is in currently kind cluster which do not support volume expansion. So that means uh, the ops request will not complete. It will always be in progressing state. So that uh, we have done this intentionally to demonstrate the alert. So let's apply the ops request. Okay, the obstacle is created and let's check from here. Uh, as you can see, the volume expansion of request is in progressing state. And let's check here. Uh, here you can see the KDB MariaDB ops request is in progressing state. Alert is uh, firing. And if we check from the alert manager, Uh, we get an alert uh, from job panopticon here you can see what is happening mariadb ops request is in progress and you also get the kind mariadb ops request and the type of obstacle that is volume expansion and in the uh, description section you will get all the details uh, in order to debug what is what happened here so if your uh, alert is uh, you, if your mariadb ops request is failed then from this alert you will uh, get the notifications or alerts uh, to check what happened. So these two are the MariaDB ops request alerts. Uh, actually, we have three alerts, but uh, the second one takes too much time to demonstrate. So we just demonstrate these two. So uh, let's make this false and move into the next alert. So this alert is about uh, stash MariaDB stash backup session failed. Uh, MariaDB restore, uh, MariaDB stash restore session failed and uh, no backup session for too long. So let's make this true and apply these alerts. And uh, in the workstation, you can see we have already deployed a backup configuration to take backup. It uh, takes backup in every five minutes. Uh, we have a repository uh, in our GCS. So the backup is already running. So we are going to pause the backup. So you can see the backup configuration is paused currently. So we can, uh, the, there will be no automatic backup from here. So now we are going to uh, make some changes in the repository, in the secret that use repository to create, uh, take backup and store it into the uh, buckets. So on that way, the backup session will fail because of uh, bad values of the secret. So let's delete the current secret and create another one with the bad values. Okay, this is the uh, I'm going to create a secret that has the different file name. Okay, I'm going to move to the another directory. So a new secret is created with that value. So if I trigger a backup, 
current and right now with this uh, wrong secret values then it will create a failed backup session so before doing that uh, let me show you the alert state here so uh, here you can see the backup session fail alert is currently not active but we are going to create uh, a trigger a backup session where it, what should fail so i have triggered a backup session so as you can see that has just failed so uh, in the backup session fail we'll get the changes very soon Okay, uh, the backup session fail alert is firing. So that means there is something wrong in the backup session. So the backup session uh, work like cron job. It will take backup after a fixed amount of time. So you don't have the chance to monitor backup session all the time. So if you uh, put an alert in the backup session, it, it will uh, notify you when the backup se session is not working. Uh, we have another alert that is the backup session is, no backup session for too long. For example, something happened to the repository or in your backup configuration uh, and it couldn't take backup for last uh, five hours. Uh, here 1800 second means, uh, 18,000 second means last five hours. So it will create an alert. In the same way, if the restore session fail, you will also get an alert. So uh, here are the demos, uh, here are the YAMLs just I have showed into the, into my editor. So this is the stash alerts. Uh, this was the MariaDB and MariaDB ops request alerts. So uh, that's all from the MariaDB alerting. Uh, you can, uh, we, you will be, get this feature into our next release of KubeDB. So now, I, I will request uh, Tazdeep to, to carry on uh, with his session. Hello, <clears throat> uh, is my screen visible? Hello. Yeah, everything is okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, hello everyone. I'm Tashtid, a uh, software engineer at AppsCode. Um, uh, welcome back to another uh, demonstration of our schema manager. Today I'm going to demonstrate our schema manager feature on KubeDB provisioned MariaDB uh, server, MariaDB database server. So uh, in this webinar, uh, I'm going to show you how you can create and alter your database uh, inside a MariaDB uh, server using schema manager. And also, I'll try to explain you uh, some of our user management system in Square Manager, which we have used, and uh, would we'll show you how you can initialize your database using a script and using a snapshot, and finally, how to clean up everything. So, uh, let's move on. First of all, uh, hopefully, you have uh, got uh, the main point that our Schema Manager project is just a tool that. Uh, implements multi-tenancy inside the uh, KubeDB or a, a, in Kubernetes. So before I uh, proceed further, uh, I wanna uh, make you know about the multi-tenancy uh, a bit if you don't know already. So actually multi-tenancy is a reference uh, to the mode of operation of software where multiple independent instances of one or multiple applications operate in a shared environment. Uh, the instances are 
logically isolated but physically they are integrated uh, let's say that uh, i need to design a database which will uh, host data for multiple developers uh, now for security and admin purposes uh, i need to make sure that the data for different developers is properly isolated by but I also do not want to start 10 uh, database server or 10 database processes for hosting the data of 10 different developers on 10 different servers. So what I uh, would do is uh, I would just use multi-tenancy in my MariaDB server and to do that in a Kubernetes native way, I have our schema manager in hand. So what happens in the schema manager thing? Uh, so actually when a user wants, uh, wants to create a database inside a particular database server and uh, tries to get all the privileges uh, regarding the database uh, to perform uh, his operations, he would do, uh, he, what, would he do uh, what would he do is just, he would apply some YAMLs uh, uh, of our schema manager CRDs and in the inside our cluster, our operator is running, it will check the validity of that YAML and if that YAML is valid, the CRD is valid, then it would create a database inside that database server, uh, inside the targeted database server with uh, uh, a declared database configuration. And also it would get all the privileges for that user and generate credentials and provide that credentials to that user. And if it fails the validity checks, then, uh, then uh, there would be no action taken against that uh, <clears throat> against the TML or against the CRD. So uh, there is a there are some common uh, security concern in implementation of multi-tenancy. So to tackle that, we have incorporated QVault, uh, which is a tool uh, for managing HashiCorp Vault in Kubernetes uh, in our schema manager. Uh, so QVault tightens the security uh, by implying some features like uh, dynamic credential for your database identity based access management data encryption uh, also uh, like credential rotation etc so cube vault actually helps us uh, to reduce the blast radius in case of any leaks or security breach so uh, you may refer to the cube vault uh, official doc link if you want to know more about it uh, it's it's a product developed by apps code and so it's uh, it's an essential element in our schema manager thing so Okay, I'm, I'm going to jump in the demonstration very quickly. Before that, I would like to know you about my environment setup. In my environment, there are three uh, operators running. One is kubedb, another one is kubevault, and one is stash. So uh, three, uh, all three are developed by apps code. Uh, and you may not need the stash operator if you don't want to restore any snapshot in your database. But as I am going to show our feature, uh, I, I, I do require that. So yes, uh, in my cluster, I have already uh, applied these three MLs. Uh, the first one is kubedb provision, uh, MariaDB database server. The second one is uh, Vault Vault server. And the third, uh, third one is some uh, configured, customly configured namespaces. So uh, these are uh, simple YAMLs. You, you may understand if you have uh, simple uh, knowledge about our MariaDB or uh, Vault. Uh, one thing I want to mention here, especially that we are using this one very special section in kubedb which is allowed schema section so in this allowed schema section uh, what we are doing actually uh, we are mentioning some labels and these labels means that we can only apply our schemas from those namespaces which are particularly labeled with these labels like uh, in this custom configured uh, namespaces, you, you can see that this has some uh, particular labels that uh, says that app schema manager. And we have just uh, just uh, referred this same thing in the allowed schema section of our kubedb provision MariaDB uh, CRD ML. So uh, without this thing, if, I, if you take a random namespace, uh, like uh, the namespace name is random and that doesn't contain this level app schema manager, then 
from that namespace, you won't be able to apply any schema uh, to this MariaDB instance. So uh, I would like to show you that my MariaDB server is running uh, with, uh, this is a MariaDB cluster and the vault server is also running. Uh, <clears throat> they are uh, created with these YAMLs. So that was my environment. Uh, and, and in this environment setup, uh, one thing I wanna mention that we would only apply our schemas from demo X, demo Y or demo Z namespaces and no other namespaces would be used and no other namespaces would be valid. So now this is our first schema manager YAML. And this is a pretty basic schema manager YAML. In the, with this uh, YAML, I would uh, show you creating database, ordering database, and uh, some user management issues. Uh, I, I'll demonstrate them. So as it is the first YAML, uh, I would like to go through all the sections separately. So first of all, uh, you can see the APA version and kind. Uh, so in the kind, if you are uh, going to apply some schemas on MariaDB server, UDB provision MariaDB server, then the kind should be MariaDB database uh, for our MariaDB schema manager. And as for the metadata section, I have chosen some simple name schema basic and it would be on the demo X namespace. And in this spec, spec section, the first, th first section is database. So in this database section, we would mention everything related to database configuration, whether it is our UDB MariaDB server reference or uh, our target database configurations. So you can see that this is uh, divided into two parts. First, uh, first of all is server ref and the second one is config. So as for the server ref, I have just uh, mentioned the name and namespace of our kubedb provision MariaDB server uh, on which I would like to have my databases and so on. <clears throat> and as for the config section, uh, if you have uh, knowledge about MariaDB, I, I, I'm sure you, uh, you have. So uh, we know that we can create a database with three uh, particular um like configurations one is name uh, the second one is character set and the third one is comment though comment is not supported uh, below 5.0 uh, 5.0 versions of mariadb but uh, uh, whatever we are using here 10 so we would show that so you can configure everything uh, while creating the database or later on you can use these sections to alter your database uh, database configurations but not everything is mandatory. If you just put the name here and uh, the rest, uh, you, if you don't consider to uh, put anything here, then it, it will default it uh, and uh, it is not mandatory at all. Uh, so moving on, we have the vault ref section and in the vault ref section, we are uh, going to mention or uh, refer to that vault server, which we would use for our user management and after that, there's the access policy section. So this is an important section. Uh, I have already told you that <clears throat> we would generate some database credentials and provide them to you so that you can use it and log into uh, the database server and do the operations you want. So uh, we don't want the credentials to be public and I don't want everyone to have access to those credentials. So that's why we would just hear some uh, RBAC like stuffs and just bind those credential access to only the subjects that are mentioned in this subject section. And, and no one else can ever reach th those credentials. Uh, so this is a, a real security issue. Uh, you can understand, I guess. And the default detail section here means that for how long should the credential be valid? Like after uh, 10 minutes, the credentials that were generated not valid anymore and user cannot uh, create or mana do any, any sort of operation using those credentials. So, and finally the deletion policy here, I have set this to delete. You can set this to do not delete as well to uh, avoid accidental deletions. So I guess it's time for us to apply this YAML. So before applying the YAML, I want to show you my workstation. Here we will watch. Uh, we will be watching our MariaDB server and Vault server 
here we would see our schema managers, uh, oh, sorry, schemas. Uh, from these terminals, we will apply our YAMLs. This one is extra. This is for schema user. I'll show it later. And this is a database admin. So let's see uh, what are the databases uh, there right now. So we can see these four databases are already there and nothing else. Uh, as I am the database admin, I can see everything. Uh, okay, so let's apply the our first YAML. The name is schema basic. So you see apply basic YAML. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, here you can see that our schema basic has been successfully applied and its status is uh, current. Uh, one thing that uh, we would get uh, the secret in uh, the status dot okay uh, let me show you okay see so get maria db database okay if we see our yaml that here is a field in the status section that is called all secret and in the all secret we have got a secret name uh, it is generated by the schema manager operator and if you uh, just see this secret view secret uh, you would see a password and the username here in this secret actually Q vault creates this secret and uh, with this secret you can log into your database so let's try to log in Sorry. Let's you. Okay, so the login is successful. So let's see what we can see using these credentials. So yes, uh, using these credentials, we can have only access to the demo user part and uh, not another a single database. The information schema is the, is for open for all. So we won't consider that. And if we see that from the admin perspective, we can see also that the demo user has been created. Uh, so, okay, let's try to do some operations. Demo users, sorry, demo user, um, like create, Creatable uh, random uh, just a name worker twenty primary key name okay insert into random okay so here you can see that uh, all our uh, operations were successful random okay so we can see that schema manager has successfully created a user and using that uh, uh, you and for those for that user they have created a credential and using this credential you can log in we can do operations and so on so uh, let's uh, uh, let me show you how you can alter your database so before that let us show the uh, current configuration of our database show create database user so we can see the current uh, configuration of our database that uh, the character set is utf8 and the comment is change again test comment so uh, let's change the comment here no, no schema basic let's change our yaml okay uh, hello all let's change it and also let's change the character set to big five 
and okay so you can see that this is configured and let's see is the change been done so yes you can see that the database has been altered successfully the comment has been changed the character set has been changed so yes we can see that um, our database is uh, successfully altered successfully created and the user has been successfully created so uh, one thing i told you that uh, the default ttl about the default ttl that the after 10 minutes the user will be expired so uh, I have to wait for uh, uh, another five minutes to see uh, how it uh, looks like to be an expired user. So in between, I would show you uh, the initialization with script and initialization uh, using snapshot. So let's move on. So here you can see that, uh, look at this section. If you have some, dot uh, sql script like this and you want uh, your database to be initialized with a script like this uh, and you are also using schema manager then uh, we have a solution for you uh, just uh, put that script into a kubernetes volume source like i have used a config map and referred this config map to this section of uh, the schema manager yaml so here I have used another schema manager uh, and the, the name of this schema manager is schema script that has uh, that should be deployed from demo y namespace and uh, all, all the other configurations are same and it, it would create a demo script database inside that same database server and as I've uh, told you that I want to initialize it uh, with a script that has been mounted inside a Kubernetes volume source, I have to mention this, uh, like this style, like init, uh, under the init, there's a part script. And under that script, uh, you would mention the uh, volume source type name, uh, whatever config map or secret or, or anything you like. And then the name of that volume source. Uh, one thing to mention that the volume source should be in the same namespace uh, for this feature to be successful so let's uh, apply these to our clusters so first of all i would apply something like this this config map i have already uh, ready with me apply the chef uh, script script.yml okay so before uh, let's see what are the database current situation so we can see we have only demo user database okay you know apply the shift schema script ml okay so there's been uh, it's in in progress so now this is current so uh, that means that the script initialization has been uh, successfully done so let's see from the admin perspective so yes we can see that the demo script uh, has been created and let's see uh, uh, let's see uh, for the, let's look up for the uh, secret. So I'm not going through the uh, a former process. I I'd go with this shortcut. Uh, you can apply this shortcut and get the uh, secret data directly. So demo Y MariaDB database, schema script uh, name. And in this particular JSON path, you will get the uh, password and username. So, okay, let's log out first and try to log in using these new credentials. Okay. Okay, let's successful login. Let's see what databases we have access to. Okay, so we have demo script. So, uh, if you remember that, yes, uh, we can see from the admin perspective that demo user is also there, but we don't have access to demo user. We only have the access to demo script here. And now uh, we uh, we probably would have some table named product here. We should have that because this is in current stage. So let's see the tables. Oh, sorry. Use demo script. Show tables. Okay, so yes, we can see that 
the product table has been created select all from uh, product okay so yes we can see that the script has successfully applied to our uh, newly created database so uh, okay uh, our user is almost for uh, terminate for expiration okay as we as we are talking about the um, talking about the default detail time after 10 minutes this status should get expired and after that the uh, schema user yes uh, so after that the schema user should not be able to uh, log in using those credentials we got earlier and I should not be able to do any sort of operations in the database so we'll see that later but uh, before that uh, I'd show you the uh, final feature of our that which is uh, re-initializing with snapshot. So if you uh, have idea about snapshot and repositories, uh, this repository is uh, also a CRD developed by apps code. And uh, uh, for, for now, you just assume that repository is a location pointer like thing uh, in which I have taken a snapshot of my uh, of my uh, database table any of my database table previously and now i want to restore that snapshot uh, into my database server uh, when it uh, it would initialize using the schema manager so in this repository uh, in this repository i have taken a backup uh, or taken a snapshot earlier uh, before the webinar and now i would mention this repository in this init section uh, as we have showed you uh, uh, how to do it for a script, uh, this time for snapshot, you would mention that repository name in this style init snapshot and repository name and namespace. So uh, if you prepare this YAML in this format, then you would be able to restore uh, from, uh, from your uh, repository. And also you have to give the correct secret uh, credentials uh, correct credentials in a uh, correct secret uh, that I have uh, done already in my cluster. So let's create the repository first. Okay, I have created the repository and now let me apply this schema restore. Okay, so is, this is in progress. So I hope uh, in some few seconds or minute, it would restore everything successfully. Uh, let's wait. Okay, so it's now current. Okay, so let's uh, let's see from the admin perspective first. Okay, so we can see the demo restore database is created as we have mentioned that the name should be demo restore. And okay, so let's get the secrets. Let's get the secrets here. Okay, again, the shortcut. Okay, use these credentials. Okay, use demo restore. Uh, short tables. And yes, we can see that there is a table called restore. Let's let's uh, see what's in there from restore. Okay, so uh, I took some random things uh, before uh, random snapshots. I just put some random data and took a snapshot and just now restored it using schema manager in front of your eyes. So I hope you understand the whole thing. Uh, if you have any confusion about the repository thing, you may refer to the stash demonstrations to understand it better. Uh, and now, uh, one last thing I have to show you that the expiration, how the expiration works. So let's get the secret for the first schema basic YAML. Uh, view secret demo x. Uh, Demo X is going basic, okay. Okay, so 
here we are trying to log in using those credentials we logged into this database earlier so yes now you can see that the access is denied for this particular user uh, this particular user uh, i uh, used to use this uh, credential to log into this database server 10 minutes earlier but uh, as soon as it got expired uh, you cannot use these credentials anymore to log into that uh, database server and also if you are uh, logged in and uh, you had a current uh, you had a running session and uh, in between that running session the database gets expired your session would also be cut off uh, uh, this uh, the, the schema manager does the things uh, in this way so that was it uh, from me uh, i hope uh, you have understand uh, what our feature works and how the schema manager works uh, thanks for being with us uh, through this whole demonstration. Um, thank you. Hey everyone, feel free to ask any questions you may have about the webinar or any stuff that our engineers can explain it to you. Okay, uh, I have a few questions. Uh, regarding the other thing uh, that you show us uh, uh, at the beginning of the, the meeting, uh, will those uh, alerts will be available for uh, all databases uh, managed by uh, by QDB? So right now you you showed us for a MyADB cluster, but uh, will uh, will all database uh, will have their custom uh, Metrics to alert uh, with uh, with QBB. Uh, yes, in the next release, uh, we will support QBB provisioned databases with alerts. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, so you you told us uh, this is gonna be available in the next release, right? Yes. Uh, hi, this is Tomal here. Yeah. So we plan to release it in the next release and support all, all right. the service types. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, I think that was all for me that uh, I wanted to know. And uh, thanks again for the presentation. It was very clear. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Abby. Um, okay, so as it seems, there is no other queries at the moment, so we'll go ahead and end the webinar for today, and then there will, there will be another webinar next year scheduled, so we hope to see you there. Please register once you got the invitation, so thank you for joining.